Now we're going to do the GALS protocol, Gravity Assisted Ligamentous Stretching. You just saw me pointing to where we're going, the sacroiliac ligaments, right around your back pockets. Bring the roller up carefully, no higher than that. Hang on to the ends, and then my knees are going to be moving up towards the ceiling, and now I'm going to go into a little bit of flexion, meaning knees towards you, and then a little bit of extension, meaning knees, knees away from you. And it doesn't look like much movement because really it's not. But what you're doing is you're keeping all your weight on those sigroiliac ligaments. And now you may do that four or five times, but I'm demonstrating now I'm actually moving to the left a little bit. Hard to see in this view, but now I'm moving to the right a little bit. Again, only 20 to 30 degrees maximum. You're going to round out and get the rest of the sigroiliac ligaments in that regard. You are also going to be doing a slightly different procedure, and I'm going to relocate my body so it's easier to see. But this is uh, where you get two for one, essentially. You get to have the ligaments of the hips or the hips opened up. So notice again, I'm placing the roller underneath my pelvis. The legs are as far apart as they can get, and I'm just going to roll over again 20 or 30 degrees. This is fabulous because you get your hips opened up. You're still staying on, you're still staying on the sacroiliac ligaments, and I might do this for a minute or two. It just feels so good. When you come out of this pose, my heels come together, and then my feet slowly come down, again, gently lifting up and pushing the roller away. Now we're going to move right into the lumbar ligament stretch. I'm going to show you a couple modifications, but remind you, you do that sassy L5 move. You put your fingers on your hips, and where your thumb's pointing is where your L5 is. And again, you will notice as you lift up, you want to go past where you were with the sacroiliac ligaments. You're getting down on the lumbar spine, and see how my pelvis was able to drop down. I know I'm in that area. And as I mentioned previously, it's fabulous to put your arms up overhead. It's just a great way to, to get your gut happy as well as your lumbar curve. So uh, super important when you come up, you lift up, you roll the roller away, and you get up judiciously. So now let's say you have a lot of pain in your back, and that's just that roller is just too, too uncomfortable. So you're going to take this cotton bolster, and you're going to use that and in lieu of the roller, and again, place that right around the fifth lumbar, my pelvis rolls down. And this is not gonna be as effective, but this is particularly important if you have a laminectomy or something like that. And in the book, I'm clear to say, you never do this lumbar stretch if you've had a fusion. It's just not at all appropriate. So now we're gonna do the vertical roller. Now, listen, you may not be able to get down as easily as I appear to do it here. You may have to get on your hands and knees and, and kind of steer your butt towards the roller. But however you get there, you'll get there. Now I'm placing the roller so my head is actually on top of it and my pelvis is well supported. And I'm just gonna hang out in this pose with your arms down to the side, palms down, or I might then move out, palms up, or even all the way up over my head. Whatever you like to do, just hang out in this pose because now you're really getting your ears over your shoulders. To get off, you can just fall off, but in that case, I just rolled off. Now let's say again, you're sort of tender and you don't like the intensity of the roller. Well, you can take that bolster, which is not as long as the roller, you can get on that carefully and then take a pillow and put it under your neck because you want to have some support for the neck. And there you go. You're still, your pelvis or your thoracic spine is still elevated. You're still going to get a nice stretch and you just hang out there for several minutes or however much you like. And then in the book we talk about reducing the kyphosis at the apex of your thoracic spine. In this case, we're going to be working around my fourth thoracic, and yours might be higher or lower, but remember you figure that out by taking a side view of your spine and seeing where your curve is most intensified. I'm putting my hands underneath my neck, and I put the bolster underneath my pelvis, because in this case I can let it hang down, or if you've got the strength, you can get up into a bridge. Notice that I am now rolling around my upper thoracic area. My elbows were up initially, but if you can, let your elbows drop down. You can drop your pelvis down or you can leave it up, whatever you find most comfortable. But that is a fabulous stretch for reducing that anterior kyphosis that we, we talk about in the book. And lastly here, I'm going to show you the neck protocol. 
Now in this case I have two rollers. One is bigger. Um, these are just basically towels rolled up with rubber bands. One is bigger, I'm going to use the bigger one. Because essentially I want something underneath my neck. You can't see it here because my hair falls down, but you want a little bit of distance between the very back of your head and the floor. That's going to allow you to support that curve in, in your cervical spine. And you can hang out here for two to four to five minutes and play with this. Notice I lift my head up to come out of it because sometimes, quite honestly, it feels a little vulnerable. So there we have demonstrated all the different protocols for the gravity-assisted ligamentous stretching and different options.